Good morning, YouTubers. It's Keith McGowan, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today, I want to talk a little bit before I get deeper into this block we're rebuilding, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to continue on to. It's kind of eh. We're going to do some more tests and we're going to measure some more things. But I also want to talk about my used outboard motor buying guide. As I've stated in my last couple of videos, this is free for my subscribers, a $20 value on Amazon. It is free for you if you subscribe to my channel. And please, you can reach out and send me any questions you have. I love the questions that are coming in, helping guys with their motors. Not too many have gotten this deep with two strokes to do these rebuilds, and you can do them on your own. It is a dying art. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have, and ask me for my free only until October 13th. That's when the cutoff is, that it's going to be $20 value. You can go to my email here at keith at outboarddead.com and learn more. And also I've gotten some great feedback on things I can add to this to help people. Uh, maybe even making two different ones, one for the mechanic, one for the novice so to speak or someone who really doesn't know a lot about motors but needs to know those key things to look for so i'm going to update this again uh in some time and make it even better to help more people so that's the goal i wanted to kind of do one that covered a, a broad range as much as i could to help as many people as i can so looking at this motor what did we discover in our last video if you were watching in our last video, I started to do some honing. Really kind of boring, really, because I did with the stones dry. Some of you may have noticed that. I did get one comment. Hey, aren't you supposed to put oil in there when you're honing? When you're honing, yes. When I'm using these sun and stones to bore out to make it larger, I do it dry. You'll get a lot of filings down inside there, a lot of grit inside there, and it's going to take away material. So I looked up some parts. Uh, some mercury parts here and there is um, an aftermarket through Pro Marine that you can get these pistons I've had very good success with Pro Marine pistons. I've purchased them weighed them against the original pistons when I've bought original standard or Aftermarket pistons and they weigh almost exactly the same the way they're designed is the same the forging is the same and I've had very good success with those pistons but there's a couple other things we need to look at and if you watched, as I said in my last video, as we were honing this last cylinder, you could hear it, whoa, 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 whoa. It wasn't an even um, boring that we were doing as it was in these two. So I went ahead and got my dial bore gauge out, brought it to my one cylinder that was good, and went ahead and zeroed out, right? So I'm gonna do a close up of this too. And then I went this way with it, 90 degrees and then I went 45 and 45 right and I did it on these cylinders too now you could hear it when I was honing in that video I could feel it in my hands when I was honing that this is out of round so this is out of round this is out of round not as much as this one this one was more drastic even the one that we were hoping we were going to be able to reuse as standard is out of round so here we go. Now this is going to need six new pistons. Now they do make a 15 over, so I won't be doing too much grinding, but I'm already three, four thousandths out with my outer round. So I'm only going to go another eight or so to get to that piston wall clearance that the book showed us. I believe it was seven and a half to eight and a half is the standard is what the manufacturer had. So um, normally I probably wouldn't do all six. It's a lot of work it, to send it off to the machine shop. Used to get a hundred bucks a hole. I'm sure nowadays it's, it's probably been 10 years since I've sent one to a machine shop, since I've been doing this myself for so long. Um, and there was times I would send it to machine shop just for time because I was building so many motors at that time that I just shared with people, look, if you want it faster, I'll send it to machine shop. And they're like, fine, I'll pay the extra thousand dollars or whatever it was for the machine shop. So, but I want to show you guys how to do this, and I love bringing things back to life. So I started thinking again a little more about the other things we need to make sure are correct before we invest money. Again, I haven't bought any parts yet. I'm getting ready to buy a kit because it's probably cheaper to buy the whole kit with all the pistons. And actually, they let you, if one or two had to be larger than 15 thousandths over, they'll let you change the kit and put a 20 or a 30 in one or two. This way you're not boring all your cylinders full out. A lot of people don't realize you can do that with two-stroke outboards, um, but you can. So 
The other thing I want to look at, I was thinking about, is I want to make sure my surfaces are flat, right? I'm going to check my heads and I'm going to check my surfaces here with a straight edge. So first I'm going to show you a little close up here. We're going to do some measuring and show you where we're at with this uh, out of round and how we pick that up. Um, it's a good thing I did. Again, I like to be thorough before I buy parts. Yes, it's been a, a week or two since I've kind of started this, but that's okay. I'd rather we're coming into the winter season, so nobody's going to be using this. And I just want to make sure it's done right. So let's check those measurements. And then I'm going to clean these surfaces off a little bit. I'm going to just take a flat file with a sand cloth on it. Again, I don't want to remove material. I just want to clean all the surfaces off. Since it's an O-ring motor, it doesn't have a lot of um, you know, material like a head gasket would be stuck to it that you'd have to scrape off first with something and be careful you don't gouge the, the head or the surface of the block. So we're going to clean that up. We're going to put our straight edge on it, which means I'm going to unbolt it from my table and tilt this up. I'll probably just put a block of wood so I can get it pretty level, put my straight edge on it, put a feeler gauge underneath there in a couple different spots. And then we'll look in the book. Usually they don't want more than four thousandths. Now, again, there's a lot of opinions out there that these motors, since they're O-ring motors, the O-rings will take up up to five or six thousandths. I still like to be within the range of what the book says because that's the way it was originally designed. And look, it lasted 20 some years, more than 20 years that way until someone overheated it probably multiple times. Um, and now we want to be sure it's going to have that longevity again. So let's measure this up a little closer. I'll show you how we're going to do that. And then we'll get into checking the, making sure we're level here. So what I did was I simply took my dial bore gauge and I zeroed it out at the highest, at the smallest point of the cylinder, right? So if you look here, I'm really about a quarter of a thousandths out. As I drop it down in further, you see now we're right at about zero. Not sure how well you can see that. Let me see if I can turn this gauge a little bit. It's going to throw it off. Okay, so right now we're a little bit, see it's going a little bit past zero. So I'm going to zero this out. And now we know that that is the smallest part of the cylinder. Maybe I'm going a hair past here. Getting close to the ports now. Okay, just dived into one of the ports, so that's why we're not getting the right measurement there. So that's pretty much zeroed out. So as I go up, you can see I have more wear here at the top, right? Because it's a little bit smaller. So now what I want to do is I want to turn this. Now let's see where we are at this angle. And look at that. Same distance, we are a thousandths over, a little more than a thousandths. Now let's just turn it a little bit and see where we're at. And now we're, look at that, half a thousand. So as I turn this in the cylinder, look at the difference, right? So I know for sure that this is out of round, and this is the one that we had hoped would be good. So I'm going to do it in this side too, this way. And it's doing the same thing, right? So now I can take this and put it in the next cylinder, which is we know is worn further, and then turn it and see it's also. So each time I turn it, now they'll tell you in the book to go here and then 90 degrees. You can do that as well. But you also want to go 45 because these can develop hot spots in the cylinders through these water jackets. There could be sand or, or silt or salt that cakes on the side of the cylinder wall. And sometimes you'll even see it as a hot spot in that cylinder. So when I went to the other cylinders, I had the same issue. So now I know I need to bore this out. So the first thing we're going to do before I start boring any further is I'm going to loosen up the block on the table. We'll set this up at about a 45 degree angle. Put my dial bore gauge aside in a safe place because I don't want that damaged or dropped on it needs to be accurate. And then let's measure how flat the top of our cylinders are and make sure our block is even and not out of, out of um, warpage at all. And we're gonna do the heads as well. So let's do that next. So all I'm gonna do, I did take a little small piece of sand cloth and just cleaned a little bit just to make sure there wasn't anything crazy left there. But I'm just gonna take this piece of sand cloth, just aluminum oxide 120, and I'm just gonna 
do a flat, even clean of this and get it all nice and clean. And then we'll get our straight edge on there. Just got the book out just to double check. And sure enough, cylinder head warpage 0 0.004 says 0 0.1 max is the metric, right? So that's the metric in millimeters, standard in inches. So 0 0.004. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take my feeler gauge now and I'm going to pick my 0 0.003, right? Because this way I know if I'm larger than that, I have to measure again. Now I just have a Starrett straight edge come longer, but I find this one works well. Now I'm not exactly straight here. There we go. So what I'm looking for is to see if I can fit this feeler gauge underneath here at all. And if there's a place I can fit it, mainly on my cylinders here, because that's where I'm, my compression is. I don't want to push down on it. I'm just trying to balance it so it stays there. My block is not really 100% level here. so, But I can't get it underneath there. Doesn't go under here at all. It's just hitting. Now I'm going to go across this way. I'm going to go across this way. This way I'm, I'm doing it in different places so that I can make sure there's no crazy warpage, especially since this motor was overheated, but I, I don't have any warpage here at all. So I'm pretty confident that it's okay, but now we're gonna clean up the head. We'll take uh, both of the heads, clean them up the same way and make sure that the heads aren't warped. So let's try that next. So first thing we wanna do is get these O-rings out. Right, and we look at them closely here too, just to make sure that we don't see any blow by, but it looks pretty good. This one is not the one that had uh, chunks floating around in it, but it did get scored up due to overheating. So we'll get these O-rings out of here, and then we'll clean this surface and do the same thing with our straight edge. We're gonna continue on in the next episode. Yes, this is a little tedious, but we wanna make sure we do it correctly. We've now ensured that we know all six cylinders have to be bored. How far, we don't know yet until we start getting some of the scratches out. That'll be probably be next video. And we ensured that our deck was level on our block, right, within four thousandths of an inch. Now we're going to clean up this head. We're going to finish that. It won't take us very long to do that because this is an O-ring head. So again, it doesn't have a lot of uh, gasket left over. So we're going to continue on in our next episode on this Mercury 150 rebuild. Please remember to like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. My out, used outboard motor buying guide is available to you, $20 value, to you for free if you subscribe to my channel. You can also shoot me an email at keith at outboarddad.com and see if I can help you out with any motors you're working on. I uh, love the comments that are coming in and several people that I'm able to keep in touch with uh, across the country so and around the world. So we're going to continue on on this, so please like, subscribe. And we'll get back into this in our next episode. Have a great day.